Hello and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Dave. I'm out on a big walk. I'm in Castleton in the Peak District. And it might not even be a big walk, but I'm going to head to Peveril Castle, where I am just in the centre of the Peak District. It's just up that road there that we end up um, heading to the starting point of the Limestone Way, which if you've seen some of my other videos, you may have seen me walk the Limestone Way. But today I'm heading to Peveril Castle. Let's go. Well, the walk up's pretty uh, straightforward through the English Heritage sort of visitor centre, through the shop, and then following this footpath, sort of zigzagging its way up the hill. But you can see Castleton below. So in the distance, in the centre there, we've got Mam Tor. And following the path of the Great Ridge, Hollins Cross, Back Tor, and Loose Hill in the centre. I've done that walk, it's an absolute beauty. And Loose Hill, and then we've got another hill over there in the distance, and I can't remember the name of it. It's that separate to everything else, but what a view. A view of the Great Ridge down into the village of Castleton, which I called Castletown earlier, which obviously is where the name comes from. Um, the church at the bottom. And apparently Castleton itself was originally built probably about a hundred, couple of hundred years after the original castle was built. And it actually has, or would have had, a moat surrounding the little village as well. Look at this keep that survived. It's pretty impressive. Let's go and have a look. So what can I tell you about Peveril Castle? It was built um, pretty much instantly at the end of uh, the Norman Conquest in 1066 by William Peveril, one of the Norman lords who was quite important and influential in terms of helping the Norman Conquest. And unusually for these sort of keeps and castles that were built at the end of that Norman Conquest, this one was built out of stone straight away, although it was obviously added to and built upon as time went on, and served as a part of the sort of um, the caretaking, I guess, and, and maintaining and responsibility for all of the area around here, which was called the Peak of the Forest. Um, I think it was called the Peak of the Forest. I'm probably wrong. Um, but basically this was, um, it wasn't really built here in terms of a defensive fortification or anything like that. It wasn't built to try and uh, maintain a seat of power as such in the local area. Um, it was more for the influence of the social things that could be done here. So things like um, taking advantage of things like the timber and the mining and stuff that could be done around here. But also within what was a yeah, hugely forested part of the landscape. Um, it could be used to raise um, livestock that was specifically for hunting really. So as well as the forested areas and people were charged if they tried to steal timber and stuff like that, um, it was a place where the kings and lords and ladies of the, the land could come here as a bit of a base for the, the men to go off and do some hunting. Um, although reportedly the kings and stuff didn't tend to come here that often. 
Um, the King, King Henry III came here once um, and then decided, oh, we need to build something else on the side, gave some money for it, and off he went and never came back again. Because obviously there was loads of castles to go to. Yeah, we haven't been in the keep yet. Let's go and have a, have a wander inside. So for those of you who've seen some of my earlier walks and have seen me do the limestone way, you will see over the edge here is the route that is the limestone way. It is quite far down, it's pretty deceptive on the camera. But for those of you interested in TV stuff, this um, patch of land down here was used in the filming of House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones series, and it was on this path cheerily that um, Daemon Targaryen killed his wife. There you go, something for the fans there. Inside the keep then. Apologies for being too specific, but it stinks of piss in here. That might need editing out. But maybe that's because where I am right now is near the latrine. And I wonder if some tourists have decided it's still active. Let's have a look. Oh, it's definitely in here, it stinks of this. Let's have a look. There's the hole that you could well have just stood at and weed over and your effluence would disappear, but it would probably have had a bit of wood with a hole in it over the top. So this keep is entered at the first floor level and would have been originally floored throughout. So where we've got like this decking, it would have been at about that level. And you can still see the original roof line inside it. So the roof line itself was protected by some of the stone walls above it. You can kind of see that. So that if there was to be any kind of military stuff going on here, that the actual roof of the keep would be fairly well protected. But what I can't see is if there was a wooden roof there and the rain hit it, oh, maybe there is kind of a, a drain hole in that far corner, maybe. Maybe, we'll have to see. So we had a toilet. We had, presumably a, somewhere within this level we would have had a fireplace. A really huge window, pretty cool. In fact, a couple of huge windows, it would have been pretty well lit in here. And then another little sub-chamber just off the side here. space to just put a little thin bed in here who knows history knows and I don't but I did decide to buy myself the uh, little tourist guide for Peveril Castle it's £4.50 but actually really useful I've just sat and had a read of it so we can see there's another window within the roof line but then you can also see there's another window above where the roof line would have been. And I think it was possibly reached by a ladder. Or originally, I don't know whether we can see the um yeah, there is a spiral staircase that goes up to another layer at the top where there probably would have been a wall walk where you could have got right up to the top and had a look around. Let's head down to basement.
the basement wasn't really used for what we imagine most castles and keeps are, where it would probably have some sort of space at the bottom for cooking and entertaining and stuff like that. I think it really was just a, a storage area, whether that be for grains or food or whatever. So it wasn't really, I mean, none of this was really designed for military work at all. Um, and it was like it was built in the later part of the 11th century and it survived till around about the 16th century fairly well looked after fairly well intact but if you can see the stone wall on this side is relatively smooth let me just take you further out and show you something so the side of the keep that's immediately behind my head here you can see is is fairly flat stone and that would have been over the entire surface of that keep. But in terms of at some point, whether it was to do with ruin or really it was that the stone was stolen off the front of it. But the whole front of that keep, all of it would have been lined really smooth, really neat, just like that side there. But you can see that they stopped at the sort of top corner up here. It's a pretty impressive keep, stood in a pretty impressive landscape. And I think that was the whole point of it, really. It was only really here as a bit of a status symbol, a status symbol, a status symbol, and to protect and manage the sort of local entertaining space. So there we have it, Peveril Castle, a little gem in amongst the Peak Districts, and another one just sort of ticked off on my um, little English heritage mini tour now we've got ourselves a little membership to it um, it's absolutely fantastic I've been near it so many times I've been to Castleton loads I've been and walked the Great Ridge so I've walked Mam Tor and all of that lot um, you've got Winnet's Pass just near us as well so there's kind of loads around here and as I say I've walked the Limestone Way and seen this but never been able to actually come and visit it and it's really cool. There's loads of space, there's absolutely tons of benches, so even though you've got the walk up the hill, um, there's plenty of places to stop and, and rest up. I definitely recommend it. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip around Peveril Castle, um, and I hope you get a chance to visit it as well at some point. As for me, thank you very much. We'll see you in the next one.